Hello, sunshines, and welcome to Devaliant to Plays Inverness Nights by Kitsubasa. This visual novel was part of Ichio's bundle for racial justice and equality. In this queer, supernatural historical fiction, you are introduced to Tristram, a simple tailor just trying to survive, hiding his true feelings and his special powers in 1700 Inverness, Scotland. Warning, this video features homophobia, graphic imagery, and depictions of abuse. Discretion is advised. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Sorry for the bout burst yesterday. Mm. The sleeves look superb. Yes. One chair in the room, she takes it, skirts filling the excess space between the arms. Her eyes are waxy again. I'm ready to give some answers. The bodice falls from my grasp to the desk. The needle ticks against the wood as it rolls from its corresponding stitches. Sinbad mentioned others. I'm here on their behalf. No better options? I volunteered. They must have realized it would be hard to sell for someone of your sort. Which sort? Hard for me as a woman? That's a good point. As a foreigner, that'd be an issue for anyone. You're the only immortal from Scotland. Berbers, Arjabanis, Persians. Plenty of options. None we could protect a Jacobite sympathizer agreeing to talk to. I have no opinion on most of those states. We didn't know that, and I was the most interested. Why? Time may tell. Secrecy shouldn't be necessary. Secrecy shouldn't be necessary. The cards held close to my chest when played. The cards held close to hers have, I assume, when shoved down her stays. I should have told Alastair more. The stalemate is impossibly frustrating. I left the bodice on one in one hand and the errant needle in the other. Maneuver through the thread, tie it around, knot it. Bite it free. Try it on. I haven't altered the fit. This is just for the decorations. My plan is to swap the orange trim, finish the beadwork, and add extra embroidery to the bodice. And that'll be the end of it? I suppose so. I'd wager three more days. That may sound like a large estimate, but embroidery takes a while. <laughs> Good. Leeway for my story. We're half through. We are indeed. I'm ready to share the next installment. Continue then. Right. Onward in the same fashion. It was hard to find ruptures in the clouds. The trio made shore on a small island near Athens. They nudged the front of the boat onto sand. Sinbad splashed down, went around, and pushed it for further forward. Once the prow was firmly lodged, he came to stand beside it. Taking hold of Mariana's forearm, Fury helped her step to Sinbad. There was an uncommon calm in his movements. Sinbad caught Mariana by the waist and lowered her. This work done, he walked off to the tree line. His stare leveled with the selection of dry palms. Fury was the last off the boat. We'll be looking for a hiding place for the silk. He dropped a basket of food at Mariana's feet, then a piece of flint, a set of blankets, and a slightly smudged, partly outdated map. Mariana bent to ca count their supplies, evaluate the purpose of the blankets, and wonder what time or place he'd acquired the map from. Just behind the pile, she spotted it. Splits of a leg of Fury's trousers. The front had burst, the back was dark with grime and wear. What's this? Her voice lowered. Shouldn't have taken him up. Not the worst I've done, he said with a shrug and tried to walk away. Where was Sinbad with that dry wood? A hand on his cuff pulled him back. I'm going to fix it. What, like a patch? She pursed her lips and swept her eyes over the boat. I had other ideas. Should I go along with them? If you want to live up to your adventurous reputation, 
Sinbad tell you about that? Mariana nodded. Fury mimicked her with an added smile. They moved toward the boat, using Fury's knee as a step. Mariana clambered onto the deck. Clunking bolts and rattling supplies, moments passed. She tipped two types of fabric overboard and disappeared, further clattering. Sweeping into view, she swung her legs over and dropped to the sand. Her hands spilled their contents at the jolt of landing. Slippers, a modest box of sewing supplies, a loud pouch of beads. Fury picked up a slipper, dusting it clean with archaeological caution. He turned it around and over. The toe curled at a point, and a star was embroidered on the center of the upper, all teal and purple. Wasn't this about my trousers? They'll match better with your current pair. You know these are his. She looked at the t to the trees. I doubt he'd fuss. His gaze following her fiery's eyes, eyebrows rippled with through skepticism, concern, and acceptance. Yeah, long as we don't break them. A timely figure in red appeared and waved from the forest. The sound of dry leaves and colliding branches echoed over the sand. Fairy waved from to the tree line. Better check if it'll burn. Do you have spare clothes I can reference? Cabin, unless you want these. I can climb. Suit yourself, he wandered up the beach, leaving Mariana to ponder the sharp angles and harsh dimensions of men and their trousers. The remaining daylight had been extinguished and replaced with a campfire. Fairy and Sambad returned from a third trip through the thicket and caves, where they hid the excess fabric for fear of vengeful brigands. Mariana was a bat lip monolith, her arms and straight-cut pair of trow, matching shirts, a silk belt, and a diamond buckle from her co their Constantinople pickpocketing adventure. Seven, eight hours to do this, Fairy grew wide-eyed and open-mouthed. It's largely dyed and altered. Are those my shoes? Sinbad clutch hind. Went on your feet, so we figured. Fairy. Whatever Sinbad's reply was going to be, Fairy gestured in silence. He sauntered close to Mariana and masked the clothes. Let's have a try. Being a man of little shame and less decorum, he stripped without delay, tearing, tearing and retying. There was a sense he intended to beat his prior speed record for garment destruction. All in place and undamaged, he spun in a showcase of his companions. How's it looking? Neither replied. Well, that's good, then. The fire was extinguished. The weather recited scales, readying the highest veil. Highest whale. None could miss the wind's performance. Fiery found his eyelids flickering against his will. Unease staggered through him, pulling his muscles and clenching his joints. Open, shut. Open, shut. The wave made a percussive crash. His feet clapped onto the sand, and he stood. The reward for his ovation, a quick glimpse of the next act. Deep in the horizon, lightning ha haloed a ship. Brigands. Sinbad! Mariana! He barked, heading for the boat. Sinbad snapped awake into fury. Mariana gathered the supplies from the beach and saved the remainder of the bread and an emptied container of wine. They threw them over arm into the cog. She hoisted herself onto the deck. The men stood in front of the hull and pushed, growled, pushed the boat until it eased into the water. They swung themselves aboard and took oars with Mariana. We'd be safer on shore, Mariana said. Where they can run us up and bleed us into the ground? No. We'll outrun them, Fury flexed, his arms in and out, slapping the waves with his oar. Sinbad, time for the sail! Right. The maw of the night salivated. It spat and gnashed its lightning closer. The eye of the storm, the moon in a tiny hole, and full, bright, attentive, waiting. A foreboding conclusion. I knot the finished thread and tug the to ensure it won't come clo come loose. Exciting too. Mm -hmm. I remain invested. We're sound craftspeople, the both of us. <laughs> Someone's being immodest. Your money's overfeeding my ego. From her chair, she surveys the newly completed stitch work. Her eyes dim. She laces her fingers, crosses her legs, and crosses again, crosses the other way, rolls her shoulders forward, pushing her breasts together, bites her lip, gathering the skin. 
Delicate craftsmanship. Perfect for me. If you can't feign enthusiasm, don't make conversation that needs it. I might head off. Who am I to stop her? She sweeps to the door. Why this story? Passes the time. Nothing more. <laughs> it's something to aspire to. Out the door, clicking the stairs. I return to my work. No use worrying over her moods when she has such an abundance of them. More than I could ever understand. A shame, though, to see her sad. She arrives in spirits no higher than the day before. Lower, perhaps. Her posture is uncanny, shoulders and elbows stiff and hunched spine and wrist limps. The scrutiny is mutual. I have committed another crime. No, it's me. I lost my nerve. What did you need nerve for? To fix my problems. It's a risk, but if she's finding it hard to argue today. Gradually along a and broad arc, I bring my hand to her shoulder. This morning, there is no rejection. As I rub her upper arm in conciliatory fashion, we remain silent. Some seconds later, we part. Nerves might be inactive a while, but they never disappear. You'll find your courage. Before I head south, it's indeed it's needed in Inverness, then. Perhaps in tandem with your new costume, wooing someone? Not quite. Suppose I couldn't reliably advise if you were. Trist. Yes. What made you want to help your partner? You've mentioned the trouble he caused, but... If that's the sum of you together, why keep the relationship? There's a question I haven't asked in a while. Momentum? <laughs> that's it. Has anyone made a habit of courting you? Come by so frequently saying no would feel wrong? You're seeing him because you can't be bothered rejecting him. Not quite. I didn't think so. You don't save someone's life because letting them die is an annoyance. What made you want him around? Four years of small moments. The kind you can't explain out of sequence. Good days dimming into bad nights, brightening into mornings that made up for them. A while ago, I used most of my earnings to import a bolt of lampus from Champagne. The supplier included a bottle from their vineyard as a gift. Before I could use it, the wine became popular on its own, and the resale value soared, too high to waste. Uh, Alice came by with his initial commission, spotted the bottle, and looked fit to faint. Runot, Master Rose, and that vintage. And then, we drank together. His son died. There's no guide moving past that, so I relied on... He relied on me to keep him into the future. You like feeling useful. There's 800 years experience in my head. Too much not to share. Does he do anything else? Hmm? Wine tasting isn't much of a hobby, is it? But what else is there? Plants. He loves plants. There was an incredible garden in his old house. No dirt allowed in his apartment, so his attentions shifted to bouquets. I've always suspected he picked my services for my surname. Her attention out the window, Shell nods. Someone who will listen, who's impressed, shut up, who's impressed by wealth, who's got pretty interest. Good to know. What appeals to me won't appeal to others. Honestly, I'm not wooing anyone. Just wanted reassurance that if my trip goes askew, 
It's on their preference, not my personality. Eyes clear and smile prying upon the corners of her mouth as she's at least feigning a happier disposition than when she walked in. Wibbly, wobbly, tangled hands, happiness. May I continue the story? It's an important scene today. I take up my thimble and my tiniest needle and uncover my jar of beads. Be my guest. The deck rumbled with anxious energy. The storm compacted around them. Each held their ground, Sinbad the sails, Fury the tiller, Mariana on oar, maneuverability that would sever the chase. Snap with speed and arrowhead turns, a small ship with sharp crew versus a dense giant. Every flicker of lightning carried the silhouette closer, detailed the threat more finely. Overbearing scale, plentiful personage, the wrong figure on the prow. A man of sharp and slender angles posed at the fore. There was a sword sheathed at his hip, held diagonal to the trio to ensure they knew it. When a predator opens its jaws in anticipation, is it smiling? Mariana's paddling turned to a desperate slapping of wood against water. Technique! Fairy yelled. We need to distract them, Sinbad managed to shout. With what? Fury's hand slipped from the tiller to wave an exasperated gesture. The stare Sinbad replied with hanging from the taut line was so stern it seemed to suspend the storm. Then the moment released, he unwound the rope from his forearm and hit the deck. The thunder cracked. The Byzantines came ever closer. If we take if we take Thessalonica as evidence, I'm excellent at slowing ships. Sinbad slipped across the deck for, to Fury's side. A wave crashed over them. Sinbad's face dripped and his hair draped over his eyes. It's better than the alternative. You're not going over. Odds are against... Odds are one against eight, he patted Fury's shoulder. You taught me chance. Let me take one. No! Look out for your neck. You're so brave, Fury. Keep being brave. And Sidbad dove into the crest of the oncoming wave. The boat was buffeted, thrashing Fury back from his post, fighting for footing and hunting for a glimpse. He looked for a black head of hair, a red coat, a ripple of golden beads. A warm body swam toward the other vessel. It wasn't worth watching further, not while the Byzantines were so close. Back into it, Mariana! The pair rode with new violence, smashing through the natural dangers mounting around them. Diamond crust was crushed to foam, steely surfaces cut to water. A crimson figure mounted the deck of the other vessel, the opening note to shadow play inter interpretations of events. He took an oarsman, threw him aside, knocked the paddle from another man, kicked someone's sternum, compacted it in on their unsuitably soft arteries and their ho hollow lungs punched someone's nasal cartilage, another hazardly frail feature. Darkness. Flash! Aquila drew his sword and marched to the interloper. Darkness. Flash! Aquila lifted his arm to strike. Sinbad glanced over his shoulder. Darkness. He wasn't terribly essential. I would, should have foreseen. There's a beat at the door. Who? It'll be him. But um, but um. Across the floor at the door, I set my feet firm parallel. The doorknob winds around my grip. I shunt it open. It doesn't hit him, despite him standing far too close for his own good. His expression is soft as he regards me. Trish. Alice there. His view shifts from my height, focusing, s focus slipping it to the background, the figure behind me. I was going to ask for help with your leg. I'm not needed. He tries to leave, but Shell creeps beside me and takes his wrist. You deserve his attention. Do I? They hold in tableau. Well, do I? Tense, the new muscles in his arms, locked and ready for use. Alice's attention has similarly steadied. 
You're so close. You need each other. Need. <laughs> Managed plenty of years without him and had my worst with him. If anything, I need to leave. Wrenching from her grip, he closes the gap between them. I can ask for help and not need him. Don't make him think otherwise. Yell at my clients anymore and I'll escort you out. Whatever you came for, it isn't the time. Because I'm taking your paid minutes. The general idea of running a business is to provide goods and services promptly as patrons demand. Shell has demanded very loudly. I gesture at my jar of gold beads as proof. Alice considers the jar, the pile of tools, unpick, needles, cock, chalk, <laughs> chalk, scissors, onward to the dress one. So I'll have to shout. Jesus. He lunges, his cane abandoned, and with a leg dragging over the gaps of the boards, claims the scissors. Halfway between the fall and dash, he makes it to the dress room and plunges the blade in the petty center panel. Picked a customer over my safety and sent me down the stairs, snapped my knee and spun my hips, then said it couldn't be helped. The scissors split open and he holds them with his fist over the pit, it dragging each end through the sleeves. Everything could have been helped if you just... He rams the point of the dress form's stomach, lodging through layers of fabric and stuffing. Bloody! A slash separates the skirt from the bodice and disconnects a decorative drape. Listened. That's it. Stomping across, I grab for Alice's forearm. Get off! A keen edge passes through mine instead. A neat red record of Alice's lashing out. Clutching the wound, I lean back f from my hips to follow with a headbutt. <sighs> and Shell takes the nape of my shirt, teetering me to her side of the room. You're hurt. There's no reaction from Alice. He dices through a seam and strikes the middle of the broader panel, repeating the actions with his own methodical process. Cut pieces turn to flotsam on the floor, sad purple cast-offs, golden dots of sand, and thick spreads of teal kelp. Finally, he hurls a body into the drift, the torn dress form in, in its rags. Panting, he angles towards us. The scissors clatter at his feet. We're done. He salvages his cane from the storm and storms to the door. You're done. Shell and I stand in the aftermath. My work is in tatters. My work, my damnable work, her commission, my means of escape. How do I mend this? Am I my knees amidst the scraps? Too small to repurpose. Little left on the bolt to replace them. The duration of the project longer than Alice's tolerate or shell was promised. The sleeves have ruptured into flat sheets. The bodice is burst. The frills of the stomach are unwound. My business has fallen victim to the same shipwreck as my leisure. Congratulations, Alistair. We are floundering together. It's fine. She's ice in the water. Solid, but not land. Too cool for comfort. I'll provide a refund. What would I do with that? I'm a professional. I make fiscal amends for my wrongs. I retain customers through optimal service. The whole visit was personal. The dress was an excuse. Each stop I establish, each town I settle, all that matters is being a good tailor. That's how I've survived. Let me explain. Fury and Mariana went ashore several miles south of Athens, where he gave her a basket with a day's food and a promise he'd return by sunset. Is this relevant to the commission? It was an excuse. This is a workshop. It's your home, too, with a bed and your hobbies and the people who want to talk. Please leave. 
It's relevant at the end. Please. She cast a desperate look at the bedroom. Tomorrow morning, then. Why? Why haven't I bought a lock? Not that I could afford it, or a trip to new markets. The Highlands are killing us by night. By night. The unpick hooks between each stitch like a sword in a sheath. The precise fit. Seems worth every ounce of gold offered. What a waste. Pulling the trim from its base like a weed from a flower bed, I lay it flat on my desk. Twelve scalloped pieces, five rows of frills, two sleeves, two decorative panels and a neckline. Two dozen feet of sewing divided into various lengths, undone in an evening when it took three to attach. Prying the beads from their sitting setting involves the careful combination of the tip of my embroidery scissors and the free edge of my nail. Squeeze the nib until the thread dis whispers apart, then slot the seed beneath my nail bed. Deposit in the jaw. A hundred repetitions. As I finish removing the embellishments from a piece, I sidle around the desk, past the dress from spurting its stuffing, and place it in a tributary jigsaw on the floor. There's nothing to be done with the fabric. A quilter or handkerchief maker could divide it into purposeful squares, but neither make my list of pastimes. When someone wears an item, a piece of your craft is close to their spirit, impacting how society perceives it. There's no dis discipline so vital, so intimate, outside food and medicine. There's no reason to interact with the world when you make clothes. Alice had silenced every possible meeting this dress could have had. The puzzle takes six hours to complete. The autopsy of a dress lays before me, necklace and to ankle-length hem eviscerated, beyond recitation. I take the coin purse from my desk and set it, ready for our final meeting. Thank you for joining me as I played Inverness Nights by Kitsubasa. The new episode will be out shortly. If you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, a follow, and ring that notification bell so you know when the new episode drops. Also, don't forget to check out the link to the completely free Discord server to chat about games and whatever else is on your mind. Let's keep the comments chill, so no hate or spoilers, as I'm not above removing those comments and the people who make them. That's all for now, folks, and I'll see you next time.